Whether you're an architect, designer, artist, or just an occasional doodler, you'll be happy to learn that Concepts now comes with lots of new dynamic brushes and the ability to create ones to your own personal preference. This video will be split in two parts. The first part will be about the basics of how to use the new brush menu and getting new brushes. In the second part, we'll dive into creating and customizing your own brushes using the brush editor. As you can see, you can achieve completely new styles and concepts now. So let's dig in and see what exactly this update is all about. Tap on one of your brushes on the tool wheel and you'll notice that the brush menu has been updated. Size, opacity and smoothing have moved to a deeper level so if you need to tweak your presets, you can do that using the quick sliders in the tool wheel. On the first row up here, we can see a list of all the brushes used in this particular drawing. Your whole brush collection is listed below, whether they're default brushes, self-made using our brush editor, which I'll show you in a bit, or ones purchased from our brush market, which you can find down here. These are all adjustable brushes, optimized for Apple Pencil, categorized in sets including 5 to 10 different tools. Unlocking these happens via in-app purchase, or in case you paid for subscription, these will all be unlocked and ready to use immediately. Another thing that will be available with both subscriptions and the essentials purchase is the new custom brush editor. Each one of our market brushes are created using our new custom brush editor and can be fine-tuned to your own personal preference. For example, if I felt that, say, the brush pen is too sensitive to my taste, I could tap the brush icon or the edit brush button from the preview space and make changes to that, or you could create your own entirely from scratch. Let me show you how it works. Tap the brush button and the app will create a blank brush that currently lacks any dynamics. Let's name this one Doodler and see what we can do to change that. In order to make the brush more dynamic, we need to start tweaking our brush properties. I'm going to start by swapping our default stamp source to one that will help me to illustrate the other settings. These stamps that I'm using are grayscale PNG images, 512 pixels in 1 to 1 aspect ratio. You could go up to 1024 by 1024 if you're planning to use the brush at very large sizes that require higher resolution. For brushes that are used at narrower widths, smaller stamps are better. Our recommendation is to use something between 256 by 256 up to 512 by 512 pixels to save memory and increase performance. You're free to use any type of source image without having to worry about converting the image into grayscale because the editor will do that for you. Now that we've changed the stamp, you can already see how we're building the stroke by repeating the source image again and again along the lines you draw on the previous screen. Almost anyone who's worked on digital brushes knows the struggle when it comes to repetition being the main thing that makes your brushes appear unrealistic. This is why we've added the capability of adding up to 9 different stamps to be repeated within the stroke. Just tap the plus icon to add more stamps. You can also delete or invert stamps by tapping on the thumbnail. There are 3 different ways you can build brushes when it comes to the source images. You can simply use the stamps as we've done so far, or you can add a grain to your stamp by tapping on the grain source at the bottom here. The same image size recommendations apply, that's from 256 to 512 pixels squared or 1024 pixels max, and it works just like adding stamp images, except you can only add one grain per brush. Also you have the option to scale your grain using the slider down here. The grain source performs best when you use a so-called seamless image. If you don't know what that means, there are plenty of good tutorials on YouTube about making a seamless texture. Anyway, having a grain in your brush is meant for adding texture. You can either apply it to each stamp directly as we did here, where the grain is pre-combined with each stamp, 
or you can choose to use reveal type, which simply uses the stamp to unmask the grain. The difference between the two is clearest at low opacities, where you can see the first method overlaps each texture stamp on top of each other, whereas the reveal type simply reveals the grain. The reveal type is at its best with brushes that are all about that clean continuous texture, no matter how hard you press, like a, for example an oil pastel. Applying the grain straight to the stamps provides a texture, but also allows you to build up the stamps for darker values, kind of like how a graphite pencil would work. Let's stick with the stamp type with a single stamp for now and move on to adjusting the brush dynamics. By adjusting the brush properties, we're actually manipulating the way these repeating stamps appear in various ways. Let's start by looking at the size property. First we have the slider and four presets. These will appear in your workspace, so you can quickly change your tool width while drawing. As you may know, the newest iPads together with the Apple Pencil and some other styli actively measure your stylus input data like pressure, tilt and velocity. This allows us to make inks that can react to pressure or pens that streak as you go faster or basically any combination you can come up with. In order to control these relationships, we've included adjustable variance curves. Say we want more pressure to equal wider strokes. By default, there's no variance when it comes to pressure, so no matter how hard or lightly you press, the stamps will appear at 100%, which is equal to the size you determined up here. If we draw an upward slope in the variance curve, you can see how the preview already reflects the change in our stroke. By pressing the pencil lightly, we get a narrow line, and the more I apply pressure while drawing, the wider our stroke gets. From left to right we have low to high pressure, and the taller these bars get, the wider the stroke will be at that specific pressure point. If you want to start from scratch, you can simply reset the variance curve by double tapping on the value axis on the right. Same principle applies to the tilt variance, which we get to adjust by tapping on the tilt over here. Again, if we make a growing curve, our stroke should widen the more we tilt the pencil while drawing. Like so. If we want the change in width to be more sudden, we can make the step from wide to narrow more dramatic, and this change will be reflected in our preview. Finally, we have velocity, this time let's try and make the stroke become a bit narrower the faster we draw. If you feel like testing your current progress on the canvas, all you have to do is tap on the side and start drawing. At the moment, tilt widens our brush and higher velocity should make our stroke a little bit narrower. Applying pressure doesn't currently alter our stroke because we reset the curve affecting that. Our next property is opacity, and making adjustment to it works exactly like the previous one. Let's say we want less pigment at lower pressures. From left to right we have low to high pressure, so what we need to do is draw a growing curve, which means the more we apply pressure, the more opacity we get. Like so. And again, you have the option to adjust tilt and velocity as well. The third property we can adjust is smoothness, which, as the name suggests, smoothens your line work. For those of you already familiar with the app, we'll notice that the smoothing now occurs in real time as you're drawing the stroke. And I gotta tell you, this feels amazing, so I highly recommend you give this one a try. Anyway, the bigger the value, the smoother the strokes, as usual. This slider also comes with four presets, just like size and opacity, which, as I mentioned before, are accessible in your workspace. Next up we have spacing, which defines how far apart your stamps are from each other. So by moving the slider we can widen or narrow down the gap between individual stamps. One of the key things we noticed while developing brushes inspired by analog drawing tools is that they require a certain level of randomness. 
Sometimes you don't want your lines to be perfect per se, but rather a bit unpredictable. This allows you to experiment with the tool and experience those happy accidents just like with a traditional drawing tool. Our slider here is split in two at the middle. This is so we can create a jitter to the spacing. This is basically randomness defined to occur with a certain range of values. For example, if we define our spacing jitter to be from 5 to say 30%, this means that the stamped spacing in our strokes will randomly bounce around between the two extremes. Spacing is also a preference that comes with the adjustment curves, so you can for example have a wider range the faster you go. The two sliders here are for scatter and rotation, both of which come with a similar jitter slider. So as we did with spacing, we can drag the sliders for an even amount of scattering, or optionally we can define a range in which the scatter occurs randomly. Shape rotation affects in which orientation the individual stamps appear. Once again, if you want them to be evenly oriented, have the slider on the single value, and if you want them to rotate more randomly, just define a range for the jitter to occur. By default, the rotation of the stamp follows the azimuth of your Apple Pencil. This means that if you turn your pencil 90 degrees like this, the stamp will follow that turn. You can turn this off by checking this box, in which case the stamp will ignore azimuth and follow the direction of your stroke instead. This will always be the case if you draw using your finger or a stylus that doesn't support azimuth. Finally, if you ever found yourself drawing on the wrong layer, you'll be happy to know that you can assign this brush to automatically draw into any layer you like. Just make sure automatic layering is enabled in the layers menu. Now that we're done with our demo brush, we want to make sure that we can spot it from our library when needed. By default, the app creates an icon for it based on the first stamp image you added. But in case that's not recognizable enough or you end up with a bunch of them looking too much alike, you can return to the workspace, draw or write a little sample, select it, and drag and drop it on your brush icon in the brush menu. If you want to use color, images, or any other tools, that's totally fine too. If you're subscribed to the Everything plan, you can easily share assets from the app like object packs and color palettes. Custom brushes are now included too. Sharing happens per pack by tap and holding one of the brushes. These assets can then be opened by users who have a free concepts account, and if you make changes to the brushes you've shared, these users will have the option to accept those updates. We hope this helps you in getting started, whether it's to obtain more brushes, tweak the ones you already have, or build your own brushes from scratch. We're super excited to see what you guys can come up with and would love to share your work on our social channels, so don't forget to add our hashtag concepts app to your posts. Click on the circular icon to subscribe for more tutorials and other videos. If you want to be notified by them, click on the bell button below, and if you found this helpful, please leave us a like. That's all for now, see you guys in the next video. Oh, oh.